Hey guys, welcome back to Vinyl TV. My name's Craig, and thanks for watching this video. Today, I'm going to talk about something that's very important to recording in the recording industry and home recording as well. Um, so we're talking about tape. And by the way, <laughs> I know every, a lot of people need haircuts because we've got this, uh, you know, virus thing going on. So don't judge me. <laughs> so um, one of the things that um, is dealt with with tape recording, and, and it's very simple on, you know, decks like these, because it's just switches that you push and it depends on, you know, when you use these cassettes. There's a normal bias, right? And then there's a high bias, right? And then, of course, we don't want to forget about TDKs as well, because, you know, those were the two most popular brands. Um, and But this applies to cassettes as well as reel-to-reel. -reel. Um, recording studios have to pay meticulous attention to this. They have technicians that, you know, that take care of this, and it's called bias. So when you flick these little switches, you know, on your cassette decks, you put normal, high, CRO2, type 1, type 2, type 4, type, you know, whatever, you're actually changing something that happens and has to happen when you're recording onto magnetic tape. True for all recording, magnetic recording tape recorders, okay? So first, I thought, I thought we would just cover briefly, and I know this is... It's not really vinyl related. I know I called the channel Vinyl TV, but when we used to, when I used to buy records, and a lot of people did this, um, you would put them on and you would record them onto cassette or reel to reel um, in order to preserve the record itself, because turntables back in the '70s might not have been as precise or gentle on the records as you know the ones that we have today. So, you know, you could very easily wear the records out if you played them a few times. So we all, a lot of us did, you know, record them onto tapes and then the tapes you play them over and over again. And then when they wore out, you got the record back out and did it again. So the way it works is this, this is going to be a very simple explanation. I hope that you guys can understand this inside. When you open the, uh, the door, on a cassette deck and you look down inside there's some stuff in there if you look down there and there's a head there's actually two heads usually sometimes there's three and they're not not usually but in the very expensive ones there is but um the the one one of the heads is responsible for imprinting the music or the signals onto the tapes so a cassette or a tape and reel to reel any kind of tape is basically a plastic strip think of a piece of scotch tape you know even and then they put this very very fine powder onto it and they glue it on with something called a binder and that's magnetic so when you run that past the head that pardon my non-symmetrical drawings i'm not a I'm not a i'm not a drawing artist um what happens is the signal comes in through these two wires into the head right and then it there's a coil here and this is like a transformer but what it does is it converts the electrical signals which is what's coming from your turntable or wherever you're recording you know your stuff from converts it from electrical signals into magnetism or magnetic signals that exactly correspond to the electrical signals and the magnetic signals travel through this core and there's a little gap here and you can't see the gap when you look in there because it's very very small it's probably like a micron or something i don't know the exact measurement um and this gap you've got it's like a, it's a magnet it's an electromagnet this is what this thing is electromagnets are used everywhere motors your refrigerator cars you know the the alternator in your car the the, the you know the, the the starter the 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 motor in your phone that vibrates it when you get a message i mean car drives i mean i could go on and on all day where electromagnetism if we didn't have it we wouldn't even have electricity 
in the first place. So it's very important. These electromagnets are very important. There's probably a transformer somewhere down the street from your house that supplies you your, your power. So, and there's up on the poles and whatnot. So this is a little electromagnet. And when the signal comes in, it energizes this in the pattern of the signal being recorded. So if I speak into a microphone and I put it through an amplifier and I hook it up to a tape recorder and I record myself on tape, what it's doing is it's taking the patterns of my vocal cords and converting them from the microphone into electrical signals. And then the electrical signals are amplified and they come in here and then they're transfer they're translated back into magnetic impulses. And those impulses are then imprinted onto the tape because tape's moving past the heads. That's why there's an arrow here. They're moving past the head. And so the tape gets the tape remembers the magnetic impulses of what's coming off of, you know, the record head. That's basically how it works. I mean, yeah. Uh, but there's a problem. <laughs> and this is where we get into tape bias, okay? The problem is that, um, and this was discovered, you know, very early on in the, you know, early developments of tape recording. The problem is that tape doesn't respond in a linear fashion to these signals. And so, in other words, if the signal is very low, the tape says, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to remember this. But once the signal gets up past a certain level, then the tape wakes up and goes, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll record this. I'll, I'll, I'll remember this. So what this does, here's a graph. I hope you guys can, here's a graph. Um, if I start recording a signal at a very low level and I slowly increase it over time like this, this is linear. You can see that's a straight line, pretty much, right? But the tape doesn't, when you play it back, it doesn't record it that way. The tape says, nah, I'm too lazy over here. I, this isn't high enough yet. I'm just going to, you know, hang out. But then once it gets above a certain level, then the tape wakes up and goes, okay, yeah, I'm good, right? So this part here is linear, which means that it can record the signal properly. And then once it gets up to a certain point, of course it cuts off and that's why you get distortion. So what this does, <laughs> pardon my pardon my diagrams, but they're they're the best I can do, is if you record a signal onto a tape like this, which is supposed to be a sine wave, although it's pretty bad, but you know, something like that, you see how smooth and round that is. What you're gonna get when you play the tape back is something like this. And that's going to come out as distortion. This is harmonic distortion. And that's going to cause it to sound crappy. And a lot of really cheap tape recorders, like if you ever had a little tape recorder when you were a kid or something like that, you know, you noticed that it sounded crappy, you know, because they weren't using, they weren't using bias or they were using a different kind of bias that didn't really work very well. So this was a problem. So... What was what ended up happening? Was it was discovered that if you and this took a long time, it took years of development and different people and different uh, areas, and you know, over time, it was discovered. And there's a Wikipedia uh, article down in the description, by the way, if you want to read it, that shows all the history of all this stuff. What they determined was if you take a very high frequency. So we're talking like, I'm going to say 100,000 hertz. Okay, so humans, us, you, me, you, we all hear from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That means that 20 vibrations per second all the way up to 20,000 vibrations per second per second. So the 20 hertz is the low frequencies, the bass, you know, hear people driving by with their subwoofers going. The 20,000 hertz is the high frequencies with the the symbols, the, you know, the, the, the air, the breaths, you know, all that stuff. And then there's all that stuff in between. Um, so that's what we hear. So 20,000 hertz is the highest that most humans can hear, if you're lucky. 
A hundred thousand hertz is a lot higher than that. And I'm I'm giving you a ballpark figure because I don't know the exact frequency of biasing. It depends on the tape speed. It depends on a lot of things. But let's just say it's a hundred and a hundred thousand hertz. So it's very high. So you can't hear it. But it turns out that if you add this to the audio signal that's being recorded, it um it it fools the tape and it's it avoids this thing here and it makes the tape operate in a more linear fashion fashion like this so it, it allows the tape to record the signal exactly the way it's supposed to be recorded and it gets rid of this problem here which causes distortion so the analogy that i'm going to give to you is this when you dive into a pool um, you know, you open your eyes and everything's blurry because, you know, you can't see clearly in under, you know, underwater without a diver's mask. So, and that's because the, um, your eyes are designed to work in like an atmosphere like this with air. And there's a curvature of the, of what's called the cornea. And there's a lens inside your eye and all this kind of stuff that works in this kind of environment. But as soon as you go underwater, uh, then the water acts as a lens and it distorts the images so that you can't see clearly underwater. So what then what you do is you so you wear a diver's mask and what that does is it puts air between your eyes and the water itself and that acts as a bias. You see, it provides, you know, a, a, an environment where your eyes can work the way they're supposed to work. So that's what the bias does in a tape recorder. It, uh, sorry, I got the wrong one there. It shifts the way the tape reacts to the audio signal into a region where it's linear. So it avoids this. And well, that's gonna happen anyways because it can only handle so much signal. So what you end up with is when you play it back, you're going to get exactly, basically, almost exactly what you recorded. You're not going to get this distortion anymore. That's what bias is. So it's a high frequency signal that's added to the audio signal that you're recording that brings the tape into a region of operation that's more acceptable and that sounds much better. And uh, it's kind of like a like it's like medication you know it helps <laughs> so um now what happens is that you know you've got different different formulations of tape for i'm just talking cassettes right now i think mostly with reel to reel you're just you're talking about what's called ferric oxide cassette, uh, tapes where it's just a ferric oxide which is basically rust a uh, very very fine ferric oxide powder that um is deposited onto the binder onto the, the this plastic uh with the you know glue on it and that's what you're recording the signal onto and the thing about cassettes is that they're they run at a very slow speed almost two inches per second which is very slow i mean we're talking these things used to be used for answering machines and dictation they're they weren't designed for music you know if they were they would have been designed differently but they were only designed for dictation but uh technology came along and they came up with different tape formulations so this is not a ferric oxide cassette this is a chromium dioxide cassette now this isn't this actually probably isn't chromium dioxide it's um magneto what does it say on there black magneto or something it's a different kind of particle that's much smaller and it reacts you know differently to being recorded onto but for that reason you have to change the bias when you record onto these these don't require a lot of bias signal being added to the, the audio you're recording these require more bias more otherwise they're gonna distort like i just showed you so these require a more bias because that's what happens when you press the button or you flick the switches or whatever on your cassette decks or uh, 
is you're raising the amount of bias that is being applied to the signal. And when you use a metal tape, which I don't have here, I never really got into metal for some reason. I think it was, I was afraid of they were wearing out my heads or something. And use a metal tape, um, the bias had to be even higher uh, in order to for the tape to react, you know, properly to the signal that you were recording. So that is, and when you recording studios, you've got these big, huge. I mean, you used to use them, and like some. I'm, I'm sure a few still do. You use these big tape machines that are the size of refrigerators, practically, and these big, wide, two-inch tapes that travel. This is we're talking two inch, two inches per second here. Those things run, run at like thirty inches per second, or maybe fifteen if if you're on a budget. So they're going a lot faster. The tapes traveling past the heads a lot faster so that the information being recorded is spread out more. So it's going to be clearer and it's going to have more energy because the speed of the tape is faster. And, I'm, I'm, and it's, that's just the way it works. Uh, it's like with vinyl. I mean, you know, the outer, you know, the, the first three songs always sound beautiful. And then when you get in towards the middle, the velocity of the groove traveling past the stylus decreases and everything's crammed together more. So sometimes you, you lose some fidelity in the, in the sound. Um, so the faster it runs by the stylus, the better it sounds. Same with tape. The faster it runs by the heads, the better it sounds. And in most cases, back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, there was multiple tracks. Like on a cassette, there's two tracks per side. You know, it's how you get stereo. Uh, left and right so there's four tracks on one of these cassettes but in a recording studio there was up to like 24 tracks right so every time they put a tape onto the recorder somebody had to go in and adjust the bias because every tape was different even tapes from the same manufacturer with the same formulation they you it could be different and it took like an hour or two hours or something like that to go in and painstakingly adjust the bias for each track. And that had to be done every day. Someone would come in at seven o'clock in the morning and they'd do that. It was pretty important. Um, I worked in a couple of recording studios. One of the ones I worked in was an eight track studio, not to be confused with eight track tapes. There was just eight tracks on the Thing. And I never adjusted the bias because it was, um, you just, in that kind of a studio, you just didn't do it. It wasn't a commercial recording studio, but in the big studios, they had to do it every day. And because if the bias isn't right, if it's too low or too high, you're going to end up with those things I showed you down there, which is those weird curves. And that's going to cause distortion. So that's what it is. That's bias. That's these switches here and. Of course, other things that make cassettes sound good are Dolby, and I know some people don't like it and everything, and there's all this conversa conversation about how Dolby caused, you know, distortion or um, artifacts and everything. But those, that we can talk about that in another, in another video. Um, all in all, cassettes, um, in my opinion, they sounded pretty good. And um, especially for what they are, you know, running it just under two inches per second, um, they, they sounded pretty good. <laughs> In a lot of cases, if you had a really good cassette deck, like a Nakamichi or something like that, um, you could get them to sound pretty good. You know, but of course, it depends on your stereo system. If you're, if you're running, you know, a $50,000 pair of speakers, well, probably not. But for most of us, they sounded fine and uh, that's because of the biasing and the way that you know they formulated these tapes and of course anything that was recorded on you know on records uh before 1980 was recorded on tape in the studios so you're hearing tape um and uh that's uh that's because we were able to discover bias uh, if it wasn't for that, I don't know what we would have done. I don't know. Uh, but that that's what we have. And that's what we had. Of course, now everything is digital. But still, some people use 
still use tape machines because there's a certain sound to them. They have a certain characteristic sound that that you can't really get off of digital. All well, you can you can come very very close with it because there's plugins and stuff like that. So anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. No, don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell so you get notified when I post a new video. Post comments down below. What do you think about this stuff? And um, I'd like to hear from you. I do read the comments and uh, hope to see you very soon. If you want to buy a t-shirt, tgtshirts.com. That's where you would go. In the meantime, be safe. And thank you so much for watching. This is Vinyl TV. Cheers. And keep spinning because vinyl is final. Cheers.